and the art market of Salt Lake City sucks. So I was waiting for something to, to drop in my lap, and now this thing, uh, this book comes out. I'd really love it to be, explore a bunch of different threads, you know, how you can live a long time, how you can live purposefully, how do you maintain mental health? One of the things I've been working on is, is if you're living a very long time, you know, how do you keep your will to live alive? You know, after 300 years, what keeps you going? Um, uh, the New Age stuff, you know, I've been immersed in it for 27 years now. Um, I think there's a lot there uh, that I'd like to explore. Um, the idea, idea of writing a utopian novel, what would, we do, what would the world like, be like if we um, you know, could survive on the tenth the energy we use now? Um, what is total solar equipment? Um, I'm really having fun with that, that one, or the whole steampunk, or solar pump idea. So, yeah. That's, yeah, that's exactly, it. I'm not sure if it would be, I've heard of a couple things, but it would probably have to be on your, your uh, iPad <coughs> or a computer or something like that. And that or it could be YouTube Yeah, yeah, well, I thought, I mean, one of the first thoughts was, you know, do I want to have Facebook pages for my characters? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm really, uh, uh, I'm open to anything there. I, I, I think you know the the technology we've got um, offers a lot of possibilities. Um, one of the things I've in the 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 vampire or, or infinite thing, I realized that there's a lot of sleeping vampires around the world, um, and most of the mausoleums and most of the cemeteries in the world are actually full of sleeping vampires hibernating vampires. They're not really dead people. Um, but along those lines that started, I, for some reason before, predating the book, I had a fascination with taking photographs of cemeteries. Um, you know, there's beautiful architecture, um, and a really poignant, um, what we call that, epitaphs, and stuff like that. And um, I've expanded that to, I've been, and for a very long time, I've, well, maybe five years now. <clears throat> In my spare time, I'll get on a, a satellite photo uh, site called uh, Flash Earth and fly around the Earth. And then I'll wiki um, some temple in Japan. And while I'm reading about it, I can zoom in on that temple and look at it from above. And actually, I was in Kyoto uh, a couple months ago and we found a couple of the temples that were and I was looking around, over here, there's another temple. And it's not mentioned at all, just that it's the exact same layout as the temple. And I like the book, or whatever it is, you know, to encourage people hmm. to look for places like this. You know, I, I'm sort of, sort of thinking polycultural here, or pan-cultural. I would really like to put a bunch of threads that people could follow themselves to other places. Um, I, I'm into astrology and vampires and that kind of mystery school stuff. And I have a lot of contact with like vampire experiences like all my life. Um, but I kind of have a comment about the astrology. I picked up this little book that's called Orbits and it was written by someone in a philosophy mystery. And it talked about the sun being like a 95 months and pulling a cosmic energy of all the rays and then it's beam down to the earth uh -huh. through vibration. And then the light, um, so the energy is coming into the universe, and it all goes to the planet through vibration. Yeah. And so as it spirals up, light forms as they're fractured because uh, it's the prism that have taken on certain elements of that light force, mm -hmm. then return the light force as organisms as they grow up and out of the earth. And so humans, of like 
and their evolution back into the universe by spiraling up and out. Mm -hmm. Plants do it as they blossom and bloom, they give back the energy and then it like spirals out. And so I see astrology as a big kaleidoscope. And so as the planets, planets are focusers of cosmic energy right. from the constellations and beyond. So the constellations pull in from the directing, it's called the celestial belt. And then the planets are the lenses where it gets focused, and then it's all beam to the sun, and then beam to the earth. And you could, you could say that like from the central sun, it's part of the universe yeah. doing that. And when it comes into a human organism, it comes straight into your heart, and then it causes the, the pumping in the blood, and then life kind of like happens in the physical body. Um, so with the, with the like more than one sun, or with the moon, um, there's a lot of things that can happen, like there's going to be a ripple effect opening up a portal. Yeah. The vicious Pisces and the aliens from other dimensions can travel through. Yeah. You know, but a lot of things are through the currents. There's also, um, as the human body has an aura, with an etheric and an astral and spiritual, the earth does too. And like people who have died, um, um, if they don't have that kind of spiritual work, they're stuck in a density. Yeah. So they're stuck in the lower etheric layer of the earth. And so they call it the realm of Hades, which is a dark shadow realm. From this realm, you can technically stay alive. You need like master enough concentration, or you know you're there. Your usual waiting, your waiting period in the lower etheric is about 500 years. Yeah. And some people will reincarnate and not have gone up to the what's called the, the celestial light, which is the astral realm, yeah. or the heavenly realms. But they weren't able to work off their density, and they just reincarnate what they call God, see your soul, and have taken the left hand path. Yeah. So it's the left door back into reincarnation. If you have a theme from a, an ancestor who's evolved enough to an angelic realm, they can actually come down and help you and pull you back up. Mm -hmm. And so part of the meditation is clearing out the slow etheric. So when you're there, you can go to the light, become celestialized, and then either choose to reincarnate as a divine being or stay up there or continue your evolution path yeah. beyond the level of um, what we call the karmic thought. So Good. that's that. Yeah. That's interesting because yeah. one of the first things I realized in the vampires is that all stories about them being afraid of light or garlic are actually just myths that we put out there. If somebody accuses you of being a vampire and forces you to eat garlic, you say, okay, see, I'm not a vampire. See, I'm not afraid of light. Light actually is, you know, the source of energy. So um, it's fun. There's a lot of, I characterize, there's a, a type of fiction, science fiction called hard science fiction. And it's where you take the smallest deviation from reality as physicists describe it. Um, but change just one little thing. And this is what I'd like to do. I'd like to use as much of all the different theories and possibilities to put in the book. And I, I could say a couple of things. One, one of the first thing is, you know, I, I live with that. I hope you know it. But, uh, so I, I'm a very lucky guy. And, and you know, Anna's not someone who calls okay. around and says, hey, will you please come? You know, she just puts it out there. So we didn't know if anyone other than John would come. And I felt, oh, very, confident. Andy I felt very confident on Andy as well. Um, and myself and the kids. Uh, <laughs> So I know it's so wonderful that you came. And we're so glad to have you here. And if, if you talk about the group during the week, please don't say there is a meditation group now. It, it's a much better to say we have, we have a meditation group at because we're all the meditation group. So, and it's such, what a beautiful expression of creativity. <laughs> express our creativity in such a beautiful and complex way. Anna? Yeah, and come back next week. Uh, next week is, yes, Manu. Manu, please. First of all, I'd like to thank you, John, for sharing your passions. 
Secondly, I would like to say that I'm a former teacher. And congratulations. You seem pretty right on that. I'm not even in the school board. I'm here to legislators who are not in the school. And thirdly, I'd like to say teaching elementary school with astrology. I'm not that big into astrology, but it's very, very interesting. Kids come to school and kind of think about it. Some of these have a really wild entertainment or talkative or creative or whatever they are. Just, and they seem to go like that all the way through school, that one group. Yeah. And then the next year, the group groups come totally different. Mm -hmm. And I found that very fascinating. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. So um, next week is Easter, and please come and join us. They're don't closed. Have... I... Oh, they are closed? Yes. Thank you for asking them. I didn't. She just told me. She goes, we're doing this every Sunday, and I said, yeah. She goes, well, next week we won't be open. We'll have new life all by ourselves. Yes. Okay. And so the week after, we'll be here, and we'll have an intro class in the small room, but I'll make sure that everybody knows. No, there's another small room, so we'll have a little intro there. But meanwhile, everybody can come and congregate here, and then we'll do it again. We'll have another talk oh, and well, yes, yes. on the 15th, and it's going to be Elsa talking about <laughs> conscious parenting. So I'm really excited about that. And she's also an educator, a teacher. She teaches up at the U, um, psychology, parenting. Mm -hmm. uh, so that'll be a great talk. And we'll have another meditation and... And we have a, the famous Andy Monaco as our musician for that April 15th. So have your friends who's done. Have a great, great next two weeks. And we'll have John back, okay? with the snow out.